Hello and welcome to the Still Up Show. I'm Georgie Courage Cole and joining me on the sofa today are Laura Black and Georgina Blasky. Welcome ladies. Today we're going to be chatting about all the fun stuff now that lockdown is easing from restaurants and whether we've been to one yet, I have, to holidays and where we're planning to go now that travel is looking a bit more possible. We also could not talk about Brooklyn Beckham's engagement. I'm very keen to know what you both think. We also have the talent that is stylist Anna Bromelow talking us through her essential pieces to make the perfect summer wardrobe. And top chef Adam Byatt is here with the third in his barbecue series. We're also back with one of my favourite segments, Things We Love. So it's all good today, other than I'm really worried I've got lipstick on my teeth. So if, you're, if I'm talking and I do, can you just tell me? I know you are one of the only people, Laura, who I will tell me. You're that person that would tell me if I had something in my teeth mm-hmm. or my flies were undone or I had <laughs> lipstick. You know, Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing, okay, but good. I would always tell other women, however well I knew them or not... Like my mum always giggles that she went to a dinner once and this woman that she didn't know kept going like this to the table. My mum didn't know what she meant. And she was trying to tell her that she had... But I have this thing, if I don't tell them, all I do is look at the, yeah. look at, look at the food in the tooth. I'm looking at the bit of... I can't see anything else. parsley that's in your tooth right now. Anyway, so if my lipstick crawls onto my I'll teeth, let you know. just give me a heads up. So far, so good. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> nice to see you. I haven't been back in the studio with you yet. I know, Gina. it's so exciting to see you both in real life. Finally, I feel like we're clawing our way back to some normality. We are, we are, which brings me neatly on to our first topic, which wasn't things in our teeth. Uh, it <laughs> was restaurants are opening up and have you been? Yes. I know you've been. I know we've been to the same place. Yeah. Oh. You've been to the IV Chelsea? I went, yes, yes. So I went to, uh, last week I went out and I went to the Bluebird for drinks and then to the IV for dinner. Dream. And it was so lovely to be out, just to put some heels on, full face of makeup, out with the girls, in different Ubers, none of that cab sharing that we used to do. So it's sort of getting there and getting away. I think, is it two people in a taxi? Oh, is that right? To socially distance oh, on the yeah, back seat, the back something like that. Anyway, so we all went with our masks and everything. But it was interesting because it was such a different experience. In the Bluebird, it was, they had visors on, sanitizer at the door, masked up. Every table had plastic Perspex screens between them and then walked up the road to the Ivy, no masks. Oh, and they took our temperature as well, actually, as well. It's quite a clever thing at the Ivy where you walk in and they take your temperature. It's not a gun that they hold up. It's just just a camera that's taking your temperature. Like they do at airports sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Anyway, it's one of those. But yeah, there's nothing. I mean, other than that, it is business as usual. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of bits of perspex. I was like, were they there before? I think they maybe were. I think also they've got less tables and some of the tables are a bit smaller. So rather than a really big, wide round table, the table is a little bit smaller. So there's more space between each one. But you wouldn't even know. Anyway, the rosé is flowing and it's really... I went for a late girls lunch and it was just like, it was... Totally normal and so nicely normal and lovely. There's some token hand sanitizer on the table and stuff like that. I know it was great. Book, book, book. It was great. Oh, yeah. so nice. So you can see Ivy. I also then went, so I really had a bit of a spoiling. I had a girls' lunch on Thursday and then my husband and I went for supper. We went to the Barclay Hotel and done a pop up garden. It looks so lovely. Yeah, beautiful. And I was a bit like, oh, I'm a bit tired. I don't know. And he was like, nope, I want to go. Let's go. So we went and it was. The nicest thing. We sat outside the two of us. They are in masks, the staff. Um, but other than that, it felt pretty normal. It was just heaven. The food is amazing. It was a warm evening. It was just, oh, I can't tell you how much I recommend it. And is it. everything spaced out more? Ish. Okay. Ish. Not every table's round, but I mean, we were on a table for two, but then there was an alleyway, then there's another table. No, it's, it's pretty normal. And, and although, cutlery I, and everything's normal. Yeah. You know, it's... Oh. Cutlery, what? Well, I feel like lots of people spoke, like, that they couldn't touch certain things yeah. and it was... and the cutlery comes out with your food yeah. and all these no. sort of things. No. no. Okay. Anyway, can't recommend... You'd love it. The sea bass, talking about Adam Byatt cooking fish, like barbecue sea. Oh, so good. So good. Yeah, I did look at your Instagram story. Oh, makes you feel like summer's delicious. back. Summer's back. Yeah. Um, on the subject of life resuming and getting back to normal... Laura, I'm skipping you because I know you haven't been to a restaurant yet. Yeah, no. I wanted to just see what you both thought and then <laughs> I know. And then I'll 
take the plunge and So I, I'm going to come to you first with holidays, because mm. on the subject of restaurants opening, holidays are looking a bit more likely. What are your plans? So we usually holiday in the Channel Islands um, on a very small island called Alderney, and unfortunately that is completely locked down. They don't want any visitors coming or going, which is totally fair enough. They don't have the medical facilities, but it is also the first time I've ever missed a summer in my life. I mean, you, it's feels, like your second uh, home, isn't it? Yeah, it's really sad. Anyway, so instead, um, we are going with my family to the Dordogne, and we're <laughs> all going to drive, which I'm sort of saying it slightly we're laughing, like that. We're laughing because <laughs> I've been to the Dordogne, and it's lovely. I mean, I'm going somewhere equally quiet, so, you know, people in glass houses, but it's very quiet. Yeah, it's, it's also... Lovely. Quite a long drive with three children in the back, but it, it will be so nice to get out and you go of where in, we live. Are you just going, you, your husband, your children? Are you no, going we're friends? going with our family. Yeah, oh, okay, exactly. Amazing. Yeah, it will be fun. Are you all in one big property? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, so, so they can all run around, children can entertain themselves. Um, so hopefully. But you're driving, no airports? No airports, mm. no. Actually, we've, I, I feel quite strongly for my mum. She's a bit, well, she, I mean, she'll kill me for saying she's a bit older, <laughs> but I don't want her really going through an airport at the moment. So I'm going to sort of wrap her up in the car and Fair yeah, enough. and we're all going to drive. Anyway, fun, quite fun. We've driven to the Dordogne twice with friends in convoy and kind of made it part of the yeah. holiday as opposed to just the journey. You've got to have that as your attitude, otherwise and I think it's hell. Stop and have nice stops and things like that, otherwise yeah. it's quite a long way. Anyway, I'm driving too, so you know, it's not like I'm... Where are you going? going? I am driving to... We were going to a hotel in the south for a week, which we've cancelled, and we're now just doing a week in Chamonix, in the Alps, which everyone says is brilliant with children in the summer. Yeah, bike rides, Except beautiful. I used to go as a teenager and sort of didn't love it, so... I'm yet to experience it with my own... Are you in a hotel? Children. No, we're in a chalet. Okay. Which looks lovely. Um, there's loads to do. I'm sure it'll be great. And then, fingers crossed, we're getting on a plane in the last week of August and going to Sicily. There's a place called Vajura, which I highly recommend. I went to last year. Gorgeous. So yeah, lovely. Hopefully, that's our, that's our kind of treat. Um, hopefully, it'll happen. Who knows? If, if we can fly, we're going to go. Yeah. We've decided. Georgina, what about you? Uh, so similar, driving to France. Driving <laughs> Joining to France. the club, it's the thing this year. I mean, the roads um, are going to be, French roads are either like a dream or they're gridlocked. Or also, to get hell? the Euro, to get the, uh, the Channel Tunnel, we were just, it was literally fastest finger first. But yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, it was crazy. I do like the idea of just driving onto that train, not getting out my car. Yes. And as a, your point about airports, just not having to have any contact with any other travellers. Yeah. Just at that moment, yeah. at least. You know, you're just kind of narrowing your exposure on yeah, you and your totally family. Totally. And so, totally. Being sensible. Um, yeah. You've just got to go to the loo, though. That's the only chance. No, they're shut, apparently. What? On the actual tunnel. Shut oh. up. Are you serious? So you on you the know, tunnel? Yeah, that's I really okay. like it. That sounded rude. Uh, <laughs> there's no loo on the tunnel. Well, it's just half an hour. Anyway. <laughs> be all right. I, I don't know if I will. <laughs> You'll have to it's, it's not do something before you get on board. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe I'll be all right. Maybe I'm confusing myself with the Eurostar. I have a terribly weak bladder. I, you know, you know, I do. If I can go to the loo, I will go to the loo. I think you go before and you can go at the other end. Oh, okay. I think you'll be all right half an hour. So I think you know when you're potty training your kids and you take those travel potties. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm not. Sure. I'm yeah. Not, maybe it's time to invest again. Well, I, I'm doing that, so I'll have one in the back of the car. Oh, there you anyway. go. Yeah. I now need the loo now. I'm just sitting here even <laughs> talking about just it. Just talking about it. Oh. <laughs> I tell you, every show break, I'm on, I go to the loo. Just, you know, if you can go, why wouldn't you go? <laughs> Terrible. Well, you won't to... be on that train. I mean, as, the, as, the, as Georgie Fraser, the doctor that came and said, you've got to train your brain out of needing to go to the loo. Oh, oh right. Okay. I was at school with someone who was terrible. And every time we went anywhere, she had to go to the loo. And I still blame her. Sean, if you're watching today, <laughs> I don't think you are, but um, there we go. Um, so, you, Georgina, are driving. So, driving to... Somewhere really lovely. We don't really want to hear about this, do we, Dora? No, we both saw the picture. We <laughs> thought, oh, that looks much nicer. Well, actually, Can Georgie, we I'm not far from you. I'm driving to Lake Annecy and then spending some time on the lake and then going up you into the sure. mountains, um, which I haven't done before, so that is very exciting. Oh, Annecy, by so, the way. Yeah, stunning. Most gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous, gorgeous place. Yeah, I can't wait. It looks amazing. And then driving to the south of France... Um, to spend some time on the beach 
and then back up through Provence and kind of up through the middle of France. So down one side and up the other. Oh. And when you say up through, are you stopping off at places on the way? Yeah, so we're going to stop up in, I think they call it Haute Provence, the kind of right. high bit of Provence, and then maybe somewhere around Burgundy or something on the way back, kind of pit stop. Still trying to find hotels. It seems like once they announced that things were lifting, everyone had itineraries but hadn't booked. And then that mm. day, all the quotes we'd had and all the things that we'd organised went back and it, everything was booked, mm. gone. Mm. We squeezed into somewhere on the way back where some other friends were like, any chance our children could share a room? Can we squeeze into and our children could share a room with your children? And they're like, yeah, that's fine. Oh, they great. Probably, I think they're, I said to them, we might just have to have them all in with us. But it's just going to be a bit of one of those summers, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Um, right, we could not talk about changing the subject entirely. The showbiz news. Nice to have a bit of showbiz news. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brooklyn Beckham, and I always get her name wrong. Nicola. Pe I always want to call her Chloe. That's his ex, isn't it? Oh God, you're in the I know. Don't know. I'm not I so good Chloe, on the showbiz Chloe the ex. Yes, getting a nod. <laughs> uh, so he hasn't got engaged to Chloe. Sorry, Nicola. He's got engaged. He's engaged to Nicola. How's the how's the teeth? All right. You're good. You're <laughs> so good. You're good. Okay. All good so far. <laughs> Normally I block with a tissue, I didn't ever have time. Um, so Brooklyn's got engaged to Nicola Peltz, he's 21, the aspiring photographer, as it's written here, has proposed to the 25-year-old actress. Is she an actress or a model? She's very beautiful. Yeah, she is beautiful. Actress. Um, anyway, we've all seen the picture, she's wearing a very pretty yellow dress with a banger of a rock on her finger. Absolutely. What do you think, Laura? Any engagement is happy news, I yes. think. But I do, they are quite young and it's not a very long relationship. So first I was like, oh, engaged already. Mm. We'll see. I hope it works out and it's a life of, you know, happiness. But it is young. If, you, if I think back to what I was doing when I was 21. Yeah. I think like, for him it's particularly young, isn't it? But don't you but think he's really kind of... If you're, you're yeah. very grown up if you grow up it, in the public. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, I sure. reckon him at 21 could be, whilst you might have that kind of celebrity spoiled brat side yeah. to you where everything's handed what to you on a plate. <laughs> I'm saying nothing about Brooklyn Beckham <laughs> per se. I'm just talking about, obviously, there are lots of very privileged people who might not have had the hardships that other yeah. people have had. Yes. But on the other side of that, he's had an exposure to life yes. in a world that most people haven't. So there's that worldliness. Mm. Yes. Um, so maybe, but she's 25, which I think is the age that pretty much his parents were when yeah. they got married, assuming they must have got engaged a year or two before. 21 years of wedded bliss. So, yeah. You know, is there anything to go by? How old are you? Maybe bliss. Um, 29. Laura? 27. So, so I was, I was 25 quite... when I got engaged. Yeah. I was a young bride. I was ready. At, I mean, I met my husband when I was 19. I was... Yeah. I was ready. I was like, come on, come on. I mean, and I think that's it. I think before 21 wouldn't have been seen as that young. I guess more recently, people tend to get engaged a bit later. But, mm. you know. Let's hope it works. Absolutely. Yeah. Who, if we say anything negative, we're going to get told that we're just, bought, you know, miserable. not happy for anyone and miserable. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> personally, I was thrilled to sit here some happy news. I can't wait for the pictures. I hope it's all over the press and that we get to see the wedding. Yeah. yeah. She's absolutely stunning. And anyway, it's, I'm sure it'll be it's a good party. entertaining me already. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully in a positive way, it will continue to do so. Um, also on a sort of, so it's not celebrity news, but... And it's not a very happy thing to finish mm. with. In fact, it's a really sad thing to finish with. Um, that John Travolta's wife, Kelly Preston, died of breast cancer the other day, age 57 after a two-year battle. Especially sad because their 19-year-old son mm. also died not that long ago. Yeah, I think a few years ago. Mm. Um, anyway, it's really sad. There's not a huge amount to gain by dwelling on that sadness other than to say what it, it sort of brought up was that, you know, the amount of people who aren't seeing doctors and aren't, she'd had breast cancer for two years, I think, hadn't she? Mm. But just as a reminder to us all to go to the doctor and get checks, there's a real worry, isn't there, about mm. how many illnesses are going Well, there's, a, there's been a panorama recently um, with Deborah for Bow Babe, who oh, came yeah. on the show before, to just, you know, we need to be treating people at the moment, we need to be talking about this, people need to be going to the doctors. And I mean, as you know, I've, I follow their podcast really closely. 
and they kicked me to go to the doctor during lockdown. I was absolutely terrified. You know, it was really when everybody was masked up. Mm. But I did go to the doctor and they took it seriously and they referred me and I went to the hospital and it was so slick. I can't tell you how slick it was. Um, And everybody was so... Like there was no queuing, there was nothing. It was brilliant. So if you're concerned, I that's really feel almost, strongly. Yeah, go. well, that's almost awful that there is no queuing. I mean, it's yeah. Well, I think it was all very. You know, I couldn't even. I had to arrive five minutes before my appointment, and I got in. I was there ten minutes, and I was told to wait. Okay. You know, you couldn't go in. They don't want excess bodies, I guess, mm. yeah. waiting around. But yeah. It was I got nice. a press release yesterday that said something about so, something along the lines of, "Don't quote me. There have been three thousand more." deaths from heart attacks in the last whatever because of a lack of diagnosis because of the mm. current situation so use it as a reminder to yeah, go definitely. And get checked out you can still get appointments I just got my daughter an appointment for her vaccination I emailed them and said I presume this is off for now and they were like nope please book her in as normal this is this is a priority mm. and the other day I had a great telephone consultation and yeah, I think I, they're doing an amazing job. They are, and I think, yeah. as you say, they, they will start often as a telephone consultation, and then if they think you need to be brought in, they'll bring you in. Anyway, not such a cheery note to finish on. But anyway, cheerier is that coming up next, Anna Bromelo, stylist to the stars, is going to be talking statement maxi dresses, pretty tops, and everything you need for a perfect summer wardrobe. But first, Adam Byatt is showing us how to barbecue a whole fish really well. Hi, Adam Byatt here from Trinity Restaurant in Clapham. This is my barbecue series for Sherlux. This recipe is all about cooking a whole fish on a barbecue. Okay, so we have this beautiful sea trout here. So sea trout is one of those fish that I really look forward to in early summer. They cost a little bit of money, but for me over salmon, they are 10 times better and perfect for a barbecue because they fit really nicely. This has been bought from local fishmonger Moxon's in, in South London. Looked after us really well, got this beautiful tagged sea trout. It's been gutted. I've left the scales on for the moment because we're going to take the skin off at the other end anyway. So all you need to do is very simple prep. I'm just going to cut the tail piece off and I'm going to cut off the head end as well. Like so, straight through the gills. You need quite a lot of newspaper and then all you need to do is pop that fish in like that. We're going to just enhance the fish a little bit with some slices of lemon, some seasoning, some olive oil and a few fennel seeds as well. So I'm going to pop some lemon on top like that. I'm going to put a little bit of lemon in the middle of the fish too. Pop it into that cavity in the centre there. I'm going to add a few fennel seeds. You don't have to, it could just be some fresh dill. Quite a lot of salt now, so that it's got time to really penetrate through. And that steaming process is going to draw that salt into the fish. A little bit of olive oil over the top. So fold it over like so, nice and tight. Fold the ends over. And then just keep going like that, like a sort of nice parcel. There we go. I tie it so that it keeps everything together for a, for a, a period of time of the cooking of it and just makes it, because when it becomes wet, the, the loose paper, it's a little bit more difficult to control. And I'm just going to literally run that under a cold tap and let it get completely soaking wet. And make sure it is wet, because if it's not, you'll make a fire rather than a steamer in fact, for your fish. And that's now ready for our barbecue. Okay, so here's that trout that's been wrapped in a newspaper, well soaked with water, just tied up, a few fennel seeds, some lovely lemon in there as well, lots of seasoning, barbecue nice and hot, on it goes. And you won't see any instant action going on. It's gonna start to really char and dry out the newspaper and slightly char, but we've gotta keep an eye on it. You need to work out the temperature in the center, so you're going to have to have a sharp knife or a probe, even better if you've got a temperature probe, and you want that fish to be 38 degrees in the center before you take it off, and that's in the thick end. So if you think the head end of the fish and the tail end, the tail end's much thinner, 
the head end, we want to probe and just te test it. If you don't have a probe, test it on your lip. You want to be just above your temperature inside and that way it's perfectly cooked. It can come off the barbecue and rest. Okay, so this fish in the newspaper has had about 25 minutes. It takes quite a long time, 20, 25 minutes. And again, I've tested it into the thick end of the fish there. But I know that's the tail end, so it's quite thin and that was not gonna give an accurate reading. So the thick end of the fish there and it's literally just my temperature, so perfectly cooked in the center. So we're just gonna take that fish like that. We're gonna use some scissors now and just cut open the newspaper, cut through all that string, peel it all back. That's it, and I'm gonna slide it across onto my serving tray like this. The best way to tell actually once you open it if the fish is cooked or not is if the skin will just naturally peel away. If it won't come away, the chances are that fish is not quite cooked. So just peel away the flesh, that skin away. And then if we just check in the centre, that should be really nicely cooked in the middle there. And we can just lift off a piece of that lovely flesh like that. And it's just perfectly pink inside. Just season that nicely with a bit of salt, a bit of pepper. And there you have whole trout cooked in a newspaper, on a barbecue. Enjoy. Hi everybody. We are today looking at summer essentials. It is July, can you believe it? Where has this year gone? And I'm gonna talk you through my key summer pieces many of which I normally wear, wear on holiday, but if the, this year has taught us anything in terms of fashion, it's just wear your wardrobe. Don't keep them for best. Celebrate fashion and clothes for the now. So get those holiday pieces out, whether you're intending to go away, hopefully or not, and, and just have fun. It brightens up your mood. You have a better day if you're out of your sweats. So I'm gonna talk you through some of my favorite, favorite holiday pieces. So what I'm gonna show you today, it's not your staple wardrobe of simple classics. They are snippets of little wow moments that are still wearable and make you come alive a little bit. So first up is printed peasant dress, completely effortless. So flattering, easy to wear, you can have real fun um, with different prints. And I love this one from Dodo Borrow that I got in the Matches sale. I seem to be on the Matches website a fair amount looking for new prints and good bargains on there. But I love this, I'm a real sucker of late for this 70s retro print. I love these colours, this burnt orange, saffron and it's got a bit of plum in there so I have a plum bag that I wear with it I've got matching shoes so I pick out all the different tones on a print like this and then I I wear them in, in accessories and it's an incredibly quick easy way to dress for the day to run around looking after the kids then do a bit of work do a zoom call and look smart so it's my absolute go-to and then this one I bought this week, don't tell the husband, which is Love Bonetti. They are doing some really gorgeous dresses, also on sale at the moment on matches. It's a gorgeous midi length. If I do get to the south of France this year, this one will be coming with me. You can wear it as a full maxi, or you can belt it and give it a more of a silhouette. Again, I seem to be going for, with the things that have this sheer quality at the top. You need a good nude bra to wear underneath it. But I love this fresh, quite bold aqua print that's going on. And this detailing is just Mediterranean heaven. For evening, if I'm on holiday and have a real tan, I love wearing something Drappy. Otherwise, a blast of colour for evening and a baby doll is great. This one I love. It's a vintage one. The colour is just fab. It's a little bit Grace and Perry, but I kind of love that and I make sure that I'm not wearing much makeup. Maybe a flash of a red lip 
and my hair pulled back, which it normally is, especially at the moment because I haven't seen a hairdresser for about six months and it's a disaster. But that's how I started up. I make it look quite sophisticated in accessories and hair and makeup. And then this playful, naive, saccharine sweet number works really, really nicely. And again, that effortless silhouette, you don't feel restricted. It's, it's a bit of light, frothy fun. Next up is this striped peasant top. I've got a couple of these. I got this in for a, a celebrity client last year for their wardrobe and it's such a beautiful stripe. This one's from A Piece Apart, New York brand. It's incredibly flattering again, big voluminous sleeve, all these lovely pin tuck uh, folds along the front. It's really flattering, so it's a lovely accru colour with peach and copper metallic stripe. So I wear this well with pale denim flares to really pull off a 70s look. Or I also have a cream peasant skirt that I wear it with. It's a versatile piece and I really, really love this. A summer knit. I always end up, if I'm going abroad, I always end up taking some kind of jumper with me. I'm always slightly dubious that the weather's gonna go and I'm suddenly gonna be freezing cold. So I always do pack one with me. I pack one for the flight anyway that's gonna take me through the whole holiday. But in the UK, most of us are doing staycations or just staying at home this summer. And as we know, the weather's a little bit like this. So I think it's worth investing in a fun, summery, pretty knit that you can wear with pretty skirts or shorts. I just got this one from Shopbop in the sale. It was about 80 pounds. Isabelle Morant Etoile. And this shall be worn an awful lot. It's one of those knitwears that looks a bit more like a, in between, it's like a sweatshirt knit hybrid. And it's a really lovely color. It's quite creamy. It's got a gray, interior so it's that kind of mile effect but this is fab really pretty sleeve so it's not your it's not your average jumper and then i got this one just from couples in the selfridges sale and i've been wearing this a bit too it goes with all of my pretty skirts i love it with a bit of yellow as well so pretty summer knits worth investing in. I think printed trousers are underestimated. <laughs> I do see them as part of my key pieces in my summer wardrobe because I think if you go for a little bit of interest on the bottom, you can wear something really plain on top. And these ones, little cropped capri pants. I just bought from Zara. Leopard print, as we all know, is the new neutral. They go with so much. I normally wear it with this striped shirt for a bit of a chic clash. And they're a really hard working piece of my summer wardrobe. Swimwear. I haven't worn a bikini, if I'm honest, since my third child. It's definitely a confidence thing, but more than that, I think I've fallen in love with one pieces. I also find them really useful in terms of layering them up putting them under caftans or sheer dresses, and also wearing them as a top with a skirt underneath. So I find them a more useful addition in my wardrobe. I wanted to show you a few today. This first one, I absolutely adore this color. It's a flattering tone, whether you're tanned or not. This is by, it's a good friend of mine called Sean, who does the most exquisite pieces. And I do wear this as a top. I also love that it's very strappy so you can max out on tannage and that it's so beautifully made and the detail is, is stunning. So it's got buttons all the way down the front and down the back. So that's gorgeous. That's a brand I will always buy. And next up is this gorgeous, fun, colourful one piece from H&M that I do buy from occasionally in terms of swimwear. I'm not always terribly snobby about swimwear brands because I do find even if you invest in a swimsuit, it's vaguely obliterated by all the chlorine and the sun and it never quite looks the same the next year and it's such a short amount of time to be wearing something that's quite expensive. So I'm all up for the occasional high street swimwear purchase and I love these colours. I mean, it looks like a glorious uh, sunset or cocktail. It's a little lower on the front than I would normally go for, but why not? And then my super chic, I'm on a yacht, 
south of France number is this gorgeous, divine, off the shoulder white number by Kazaraki. I really like this brand. It's incredibly well made, super flattering. The back, cut out, gorgeous clasp. It's like the evening wear of one pieces. Love, love. Now, summer shoes, I, for the past couple of years, have gone for the heavy, heavier statement shoe that packs a bit of a punch with your wardrobe. So you can either with your floaty summer dresses go very light and Grecian and ethereal, or you make a bit of a statement with them. And I'm, for the moment, slightly in the latter camp. I bought these last year from Isabel Moreau. I love them. They're like kind of Birkenstocks for Joan Collins. And these have been worn so much. I love them just with a plain white dress. They go really beautifully with pink. They, they pretty much go with everything. So these have been a really, really good investment buy. And I've been eyeing up the old Arizona loved ones for ages and went for leopard print. I love a bit of leopard print with florals, so I'm gonna wear them in my floral dresses. I need to be able to run around after the children. I can't wear anything that's going to fly off. Um, so these are pretty practical. About to go to Cornwall, these could be worn there. As you can see, they've literally just been bought. But, uh, and I also would love to wear these with matching leopard print. So a leopard print swimsuit or dress with these, perfection. And finally, my heels of choice. I tend, if I'm honest, not to take any on holiday with me. I just don't end up wearing them. They take up quite a lot of space and they're heavy, but I do have some treasured ones that I will wear for beautiful summer evenings in London or events and evenings out. And these are so, so treasured. I mean, look at these, Louis Vuitton, they're so, Beautiful. I really adore these. You can't go wrong with a gold strappy sandal. I think if you're going to invest in one heel for the summer, just make it gold. Now bags. I am so obsessed with this brand, Heimat Atlantica. Um, they're on matches, mid-market price, not crazy crazy, neither are they high street. They really are basket bags with a different. I love, it's almost like a Louis Vuitton checkerboard. And love, I don't know whether you can see this, these are a little shell embellishments. Really beautifully made, seriously handy size. They are the couture of basket bags. And they're such fun. So this is a fuchsia and natural print. They also do them in red and green. So you choose your most warm color of the summer and purchase one of these. They're so beautiful inside. I don't know whether you can see. They've got a leather bottom to them. It's pretty, pretty fab. Another accessory that is old news. We are not creating any trends here, but my headbands, especially at the moment with what's going on with the, with the mane, they have been a total lifesaver. I never take a hair dryer on holiday with me. I, I haven't blow dried my hair at home during lockdown uh, for about two months, I think. These are just brilliant. They make you look so polished, put together. I wear my hair back a lot like this anyway. My advice would be, yeah, born in the sun are the are very good quality ones. Go for something neutral. This kind of goes with everything. I also have a pair of raffia shoes, so I'm matching on top and at the bottom, so it's a, an easy put together, but they make me feel a bit more put together, a bit polished, a little bit exotic with this turban effect. So as I say, not new news, but an essential part of my wardrobe. So that's it, everyone. Those are the key pieces in my summer wardrobe. Have a really wonderful summer ahead. Wow, God, so much inspiration as always. Makes me feel pretty excited for summer holiday, I have to say. Uh, now it's one of my favorite segments, things we love. Welcome back, ladies. Georgina, I've got to start with you and that ridiculously cool pink jug. I have Isn't got such beautiful? envy eyes for that. Absolute dream. So this is by Rebecca Udall, who we featured last week on the site because um, we just wanted to give a big shout out to her brand. She has um, the most amazing napkins and placemats and lots of tableware, but she also has some glassware. And this jug is just gorgeous. I mean, the patterning 
and it's solid. It's like really sturdy. Uh, I mean, I absolutely love it. It's bigger than I thought it was. Yeah, it is, it isn't nice. it? And it comes in different colours. I think the most beautiful yellow. Yeah, so like a really gorgeous. pale muted yeah. yellow, and then there's this pink. I think there's a white as well, and there's matching tumblers. Um, it's an amazing price point. I think it's, it's thirty-five quid. Yeah. yeah. So gorgeous. And it's a real showstopper on your table. And actually, you could even put some flowers uh, yeah, in there or something as well. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it. You love nailed that. it. I think that's going to be my pick of the bunch. Uh, sorry, Laura. Uh, <laughs> you haven't even seen them yet. Okay, no, no, love it. Actually, I'm quite excited about what you've got in front of you. Um, number two is... This one? No, it's a print. It's the print. Okay. okay. So number two, this is... I love this print. So this is by someone called... Um, Chiara and she has Ciao, 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 Chiara. Chiao Chiara but <laughs> Chiara has um, done a collaboration with Papier the stationery brand who now do art and other things as well they do photo books and all sorts of things but these she sells directly on her website but you can also get them through Papier and there's a whole range of them and it's just that kind of beautiful minimalist but I just think it's so evocative you know lying on the beach little rosé it's part of the gallery wall though like oh the, yeah or even a, like almost a bit of repeat is it if there are similar kind of line styles i think that would look so lovely there are and some have more blue or more pink um and they're an amazing game you buy them framed they're about i think it's about 48 48 pounds. for the smallest size framed. yeah framed wow so brilliant. they're really brilliant and i just think if you want a quick refresh on your wall this is a really good one to get yeah. love it love, love it these. okay number three number three is, I think I've mentioned it on the podcast, and I'm still in the middle of a huge love affair with this chili mayo every single meal. Still, it was my hero at the beginning of lockdown when I was trying to kind of make anything just taste nice and interesting. Um, so it's Ruby's in the Rubble, mm. plant-based chili mayo, and it's got a real kick. And if we're doing... Plant-based chili, does that mean it's vegan? Yeah, right. so no egg and no dairy. And so if you want to add it to some lamb on the barbecue, I've just had it with salad, Can fish. I smell? Yeah, definitely. This is my new jar. I'll I'm open sorry, it sorry, sorry. Oh, okay. Pass that going. along. Anyway, great brand, Ruby's in the Rubble. Yeah. Um, really, is it one or two girls that set it up? Um, if you want to support a sort of young female entrepreneur, buy Ruby's in the Rubble. So the it's idea nice is they fish. take all the kind of the wonky stuff that supermarkets reject. And they are making it. The ketchup's really lovely as well. There's yes, a few ketchup's different things. Yes, ketchup's delish. We have mm. the ketchup's really good. Haven't yeah. had Is it more low fat? That's what I think. Oh, I yeah. don't know, but it's it's worth about, every. I'm a bit aim about me. It's worth good. every gram of fat, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's a really, really cool brand. So if you haven't tried Ruby's in the Rubble, then definitely do. Laura, I need one of these. I haven't asked you about this. We're getting like, this. Yeah. I need for one. this, we have Hodge, the show manager, to thank for this. I saw it, I was like, oh, where's that from? I need it. That's amazing. Two litres, your daily intake. It's absolutely brilliant. I really, and one of my girlfriends slight, read me a slight riot attack the other day. I, I'm going to, on a slight, show, my, my husband's going to say TMI, but, you know, we're all women. Slight sort of IBS path. Okay. Um, and... Um, it's sort of in my genes, shall we say. And my friend was like, you've got to drink more water. water. You've got to drink more water. And I was like, I'm just so bad. I've got to get myself one of those. If you get through that, surely... 14 14 on Amazon. Uh, you get a bit yeah. of motivational. So can you just tell us what it yeah, says, what's though? what's on the side? Because can people see? So you have, good morning, do it for yourself. Keep going, drink more, tons of energy. So as you're going down, <laughs> as you're getting through your water, it's like, you're almost there. Yeah, no excuses, almost there. Yeah, you did it. And I did it by three yesterday. I was so chuffed with myself. Wow, that's a lot of water. I think it's just so brilliant. I'm going to order myself one of those. Once we are done on the show, that's how good it is. Um, it brilliant. makes the other ones look so, like, last yeah. year now yeah yeah so good so good um number two sarah brown london yeah so You've these got some pjs are some pjs that i came across and we featured on lux list oh They're i haven't so seen them in the pretty. pretty oh so they're just look. cotton but they've got a peter pan collar they've got scallop oh. aren't they so pretty and little shorts for summer oh i love should i hold the, that one you it's kind of like one. that vintage but it's the scallop. Exactly. Yeah. 
it's just so beautiful and she does long ones too she's got a gorgeous white pair um in the long leg with with the red trim they're so pretty she does navy with the white i just think they are nice so gorgeous yeah, so you need gorgeous. some of those for the south of france might be a bit chillier than dordogne <laughs> all right all right <laughs> only joking uh, kind of i'll be packing i'll be packing some thermals not as for the Alps. as chamonix <laughs> <laughs> definitely not cold as chamonix I was like 25. My husband was like, that's good for the <laughs> Um Anyway, finally, your very special yeah, so new purchase. Yes, so this is my new purchase. It is an indulgence. It is expensive. But I'm a high street girl. I wear a lot of high street, but I do like a designer bag. And I don't have many, but I've recently um, invested in this Celine Trio, which I just think is a real classic. Uh, it's not going to date. It's beautiful leather. I just absolutely oh. love I mean, it. I it's been copied Gorgeous. by everybody, hasn't it? But there's a reason why it's such a good bag. Yeah, it's such a good bag. You can actually put and so it, much in. And yeah, you and, it, and you can unpop it. So you've got you can, that's what I was going to ask. Amazing. Yeah. So nice and new, don't scratch it. I know, oh, don't. Every time I think I get a mark, those, the alcohol sometimes leaves a, from the hand sanitizer, it leaves a mark. I'm like, ah. Lovely. Yeah. It's precious. Gorgeous, mm. Gorgeous things. <laughs> what lovely things. Right, right, I'm up next. You've been pretty secretive okay. about this one. I've been secretive about this because I think you're going to quite like this. <laughs> so, this is a candle. So, you know when you've got a candle outside and it keeps out. blowing out in the wind? No more. So, this is from Ochre. And... I've got two of them actually, and I've got great big glass lantern Clever. candle holders. Feel it, it feels waxy. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. How maybe it's wet. It might be made of I wax. I think maybe it is made of yeah. wax. Sorry, you're a bit far away, Georgina, and I probably shouldn't be doing that anyway because of social distancing, so I apologise. Um, but you put your batteries in. Can you see it flickering? Clever. I'm getting a thumbs up. And, nice. and it's got a remote. So what does the, what does the remote do? I don't know. I haven't quite worked it out yet, but it's got a remote. Can't work the remote. <laughs> Maybe that. Oh, it needs a battery. I haven't got a battery in the remote. Okay. That's not going to work. So I think the idea is when it's in your glass lantern, a bit of a board to keep putting it in. Anyway, I've got two, and I put them in my glass lamps in my dining room and put them both on, and I was just like... Oh, That's it looks cool. so good. And is it giving out quite a nice sort of whitish light? Yeah, it's Some it of those might. fake ones have that kind of quite yellow yeah, glow. Yeah. Have you that seen those lots before? Oh, pretty. I no, I I've seen, seen little tea lights, so I haven't seen a big one. I love the big mm, one. Yeah. Beautiful. It's, cool. it's close up, it's a bit, looks a bit naff, but actually I think they are brilliant. Are they expensive? No, I think that was 60 quid or something, okay. but you can have it forever. Yeah. Um, okay, that's my first. My second is denim shorts. So Lou and I have been going a bit giddy over the long, long denim. denim shorts. We were like, oh my God, we love this chair and spotted it a few months ago when the first kind of drop of spring slumber came in. How are the teeth? All right? You're, you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> and there have been quite a lot of new ones arrive at Nesporte, or maybe I've just been looking. But anyway, A Gold have got some really cool ones, Citizens of Humanity, and there's a grey pair and a blue pair. But basically, they're, there's mini denim shorts, and then these are longer. These are like... They're Almost knee, really. aren't they? Some of them are kind of knee, some of them, they're not too tight. They're a little bit more like a sort of boyfriend. I just think they look so yeah, they do. cool with like, you know, a nice strappy shoe mm. and a blazer or trainers or whatever. But I'm not a great one in teeny tiny shorts no. anymore. I'm getting a bit cellulitis for that. So um, I just think they look wicked. Yeah, that's they're, my, they're really nice. That's my second pick. Um, my third, I haven't got this with me but I didn't realise you'd bring a print, so a bit of a clash. But I discovered that Condé Nast have launched a store called CondéNastStore.com where you can buy their archives of all their old editorials, covers, cartoons from GQ and sort of film stars, you know, I don't even know how GQ's been going, but kind of really cool film stars kind of in cars and deserts on photo shoots through to Naomi Campbell in an editorial, through to Kate Moss, through to just like, you know, random models from, yeah, Vogue, 
The New Yorker, GQ, I'm trying to think who else. Anyway, they, I think they start at 75 quid. You can buy them framed. You can buy them on acrylic, on wood, on... Yes. Wood. Wow, so cool. amazing. But there are some, you know, if you like that Slim Aaron's kind of yeah. vibe. And can you get them in different sizes? Or like massive sizes. Awesome, I love that. It's mm. really cool. It's really cool. I don't know how expensive they get, but I was looking at a kind of framed one that size. I think it was kind of 100 quid, but it just, it was... You know, we've got some amazing art in the studio, which is original, but yeah. if you haven't got silly money to spend or you want to build a gallery wall, then yeah. I don't know. I just it was a really clever way for them to monetize that back catalogue. Yes, yeah, so clever. clever. Yeah, well, the, the photography that they use throughout mm. the most magazines, I mean, it's like world class. Why wouldn't yeah. you want that? Yeah. Some of these shoots from the 70s and, yeah. and prints of Grace Kelly and just mm. like everyone has been in those magazines and now you can have them in your wall. So I thought that was brilliant. You can also get phone covers and loads of other... Stuff that I wasn't so keen on. Anyway, <laughs> check it out, the Condé Nast store. Finally, I've squeezed it a fourth. Um, you've got an expensive bag. This, this is supporting small, independent British brands. Georgina, you know the founders of this business. Yeah. Um, it's called Crosslow London. Um, I think the strap is really cool. They do plain leather straps, but they do a tan, which is nice. They do a metallic blue, a black, a red. I think that, anyway, I'm a bit of a blush. Girl, 305 quid. And it's leather. And it's leather. It's really nice. So I just thought they deserved a bit of love. Bit and of it's a good out. size as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a great size. You I can fit a lot in there. A lot in there. I put yeah. it on the things I love and loads of people commented and were like, that's really cool. So anyway, we're all for supporting British brands and female entrepreneurs. We've done lots of that today. <gasps> Mama, thank you. <laughs> well, I want to take it all home. Thank you so much. Um, that's it for today. Um, thank you to Adam Byatt, to Anna Bromley. As always, products mentioned in today's show will be linked in the show notes below. Charlotte will be back on Thursday with emotional health advisor Roxy Nafusi to talk about the importance of positive body image. Plus, the fashion team will be, will be giving us some styling tips and Georgia May Salamat will be cooking and chatting about her very exciting new food venture. That's it. Don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe. Please do leave us a comment, tell your friends, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.